One night, I jumped out of bed when I heard her screaming. I rushed to her room but couldn't find her anywhere. I was surprised when I opened her closet. She was in there looking like a scared little kitten. What happened, Mom? I asked, kneeling down. A shark took my disinfectant and wants to eat me alive. It's under my bed, she cried out while shaking badly. But we don't even have a pool, Mom, I said. She then looked at me closely and started to scream like I was the most disgusting thing on earth. Shut your mouth and don't come near me. You're not wearing a mask and gloves. Go get them now. Sighing in frustration, I jumped to my feet before she could get hysterical again. There was one time when I came back from school and found her with huge blisters on her hands because she washed them a hundred times every day. The virus cases had been at zero for more than a month, but she'd been acting like there was a zombie apocalypse. One day, my older sister Steffi brought her boyfriend home, and mom didn't even let them come in until they took off their shoes and put on the special outfit she'd made, which looked totally ridiculous. Steffi said they looked like astronauts. Every time they walked, they squeaked. Mom took paranoia to a whole new level. She said that Steffi's boyfriend's neighborhood was dangerous, and she wasn't going to take any risks. You and your contagious boyfriend, Mom yelled at them while standing at least two meters away, of course and squirting disinfectant at them. My sister was really embarrassed and decided never to come back home ever again. The week after that, my mom saw my older brother, Seth, talking to the garbage truck driver one night. She refused to allow him back inside the house unless he took a bath with water and alcohol. In the backyard, Seth was furious. Just stop these stupid swab tests, temperature checks, and quarantines already. You're just overreacting, and it's seriously irritating, Seth shouted at her as he came in shivering. What if I don't? You'll leave just like your sister? Mom asked. Yes, I will. I'm so done with you. You're crazy, Seth yelled at her, and the next day, he packed his bags and left, and now it was down to me and my twin brother, Sean, who had been a total jerk to us. One night, I heard Mom crying in her room. I stood behind the door and listened. Why did you leave me for that gold digger? You should have been here with me to take care of everyone. Dad left mom years ago and we never knew why, although we asked her many times. She always said, he's coming back. I know it. He will. Just wait and see. Grandma was also gone because of the virus and it had made mom even worse. I felt sorry for her. I thought maybe I could make her a chocolate milk even though I knew she might scold me and wouldn't drink it. She didn't want anyone to touch her food. I saw Sean playing an online game on his phone and his dirty feet up on the dining table. What the hell are you doing, Sean? Mom's gonna kill you, I warned him. Oh yeah? How about this? He grinned and then suddenly started coughing on purpose. Mom came out of her room and ran towards us like a raging bull ready to attack. Who coughed? I heard a cough. She demanded answers with bulging eyes. It's Sammy. She's been coughing nonstop, Sean said. To my horror, I tried to deny it, but Mom cut me off. Enjoy another 14 days in the basement then, she exclaimed as she dragged me downstairs. Mom, no, please, I cried when she once again locked me up. Sean had just finished his third quarantine here, and the last one was because of a single sneeze. I had to get out. It was my best friend Amy's birthday party on Friday. I hadn't seen her in person since the pandemic started because of online classes, and my mom wouldn't let any of us leave the house. Amy's brother Harry would also be there, and I had a major crush on him. I had to do something about mom. I heard another scream upstairs. Panicking, I kicked the door until it opened. I rushed upstairs and saw my mom holding a baseball bat while staring at the closed window. Go check the doors and windows. Make sure they're all locked, she said. Sean walked in and asked what had happened. A dirty man in a hoodie has been trying to get in. He was licking my window. He wanted to infect our house. He wanted to kill me, Mom said, looking horrified. Sean and I tried to calm her down, but we both got the shock of our lives when she aimed the bat at us. No mask, no gloves, no face shield. Back off or else, she yelled. Sean looked at me and said, your mom is officially insane. I'm sure you're so proud. I dragged him out of the room and said, You're only good at making fun of people. That's it. I'm contacting Dad. He needs to do something about this. Sure. Go ahead. Ask him to take me with him after.
I'm tired of mom, Sean said in frustration. She needs us this time, and we have to do our part, I said. Whatever, I'll be staying at my friend's place for the week. Tell mom that the shark ate me if she comes looking for me, he said before walking away. How could they do this to their own mother? I was about to call the hospital from the living room when mom appeared. You, you're supposed to be in isolation, she yelled as she picked up a lampshade and threatened to throw it at me. Mom, please drop it. I'm going to wear my mask now, I said. She dropped the lampshade as soon as I put on my mask. She then sat down on the couch, which she had wrapped in a special plastic, and burst into tears. I'm so sorry, Sammy. I'm so sorry. She was bawling now. I first sprayed alcohol all over myself before sitting beside her. It's It's like I have a special vision, and I can see the virus and germs everywhere, even when I close my eyes. Her crying got louder, but it stopped when I tried to hug her. The next day, I ordered ice cream and pizza and lied that I had made them all myself using the clean ingredients from the fridge. I then suddenly started coughing uncontrollably in front of her. Oh no, it was probably the cold ice cream. My heart started to race when my mom flipped into crazy mode again. She angrily pushed the dining table over and shouted, That dirty man is is right behind you! Mom screamed. I turned around but didn't see anyone behind me. Are you sure? I asked. I swear, he was here. He was spitting everywhere. He wants to fill our house with the virus, with his disgusting saliva, she cried before running upstairs to hide in her room. While looking for any signs of the dirty man in our house, I was horrified to see that one of the windows in the kitchen was open. When I turned around, I gasped when a man pressed a finger against my lips. It was him, the dirty man that mom was talking about. He was real. I was about to bite his hand and scream, but I froze the moment he showed me his face. Dad? He pulled me into a corner and started explaining. I have been trying to apologize to your mom, but she always screams whenever I go near her. I think she's hallucinating. That's why she thinks I'm trying to hurt her, Dad said. I couldn't believe he was back. He went on to say that his girlfriend had left him and he had nowhere to go. He was literally begging, and I didn't know what to do. I told him that mom had gone insane, and he needed to work hard to win her heart again. Mom didn't even open her door for the next few days. She was in self-quarantine again. I let Dad stay with us for a while because I needed his help in dealing with Mom. Then one day, Mom suddenly went missing. Dad found a way to break her door after hearing some odd noises in there. But she'd only left a note saying, That man came back, just like I expected. I even saw him rubbing his eyes after holding the remote. I can't take this anymore. I'm sorry, Sammy. Take care of yourself. Mommy loves you, despite everything. Oh my God, what had she done? We asked for help from the police to look for her around the house and all over the city, but it had already been a month and there was no sign of her. A while later, I was in the basement and while I was going through some old stuff, a big rat ran over my foot. I screeched and jumped back, lost my balance and landed on the floor. Groaning, I turned to my side and noticed something under the rug on the floor. I lifted it and saw a trap door. I had never noticed it before. I opened it and saw a set of stairs going down. I went down and was startled to see a huge glass cage, and my mom was sleeping in it. It looked squeaky clean, with hand sanitizers and alcohol everywhere, and also herbal supplements and vitamins. Oh my gosh, she'd been living here the whole time. I tried to shake her awake, but she wasn't moving. Her skin felt cold, and there was an empty container of alcohol beside her. Panicking, I called Dad, and we took her to the hospital. A lot of procedures were done on her, and the results showed that her stomach was irritated from alcohol ingestion. She got treatment for it and started to feel better. It was 3 a.m. and mom woke me up beside her in the hospital bed. Sammy, wake up. The shark is back again. I told her to relax and go back to sleep, but she kept pointing at the window. I got up to take a look, and she was completely weirded out to see a shark tail poking out from behind a building across the street. I rubbed my eyes and checked again, but it wasn't there anymore. Wait a minute. What was happening? Was I going crazy too? It was there, right? I'm not crazy, Sammy. It was there, Mom exclaimed while shaking. I waited until Mom fell asleep before heading out of the hospital alone. While I was crossing the road, a black van suddenly stopped in front of me. 
The doors opened and a masked man got out and grabbed me and threw me inside. I tried to fight back and scream, but he had already handcuffed me, tied up my feet, and put duct tape over my mouth. I looked around and saw the shark beside me. It was a costume. I woke up in an unfamiliar room. The masked man entered with a younger, smaller guy. They told me that I was in an old abandoned house in the middle of nowhere, and I was devastated. Who are you people? Why are you doing this? What did I do to you? I cried while thinking about mom who was all alone now. I need your mom to totally lose her mind, but you kept getting in my way, the older man said, which gave me goosebumps because his voice sounded familiar. No, it couldn't be him. My eyes grew wide the moment he took off his mask. Dad? Why? Come on, Dad. Let's go before someone sees us, the younger man said who I figured out was Sean. Don't worry, sweetheart. We're not going to hurt you, Dad said. I didn't believe him. You can quarantine for the rest of your life here, sis. I'm sure your crazy mom would be proud, Sean said before laughing at me. They were about to leave when the police unexpectedly barged in, along with someone who looked like an astronaut. Mom! Dad and Sean were caught off guard as the police immediately handcuffed them. Mom then ran towards me and untied me. She looked so weak, yet here she was, saving us like a superhero. Just as the police were arresting them, Mom suddenly passed out. We brought her back to the hospital and she was placed in the ICU. A CT scan of her brain revealed a small tumor. The doctor said it was the reason for her changes in behavior, but it was easily removable. I tried contacting my siblings regarding the hospital bills, but they refused to help. Steffi said that she was pregnant and had more important things to do, while Seth had started working again and was busy looking for an apartment. They said that they were done with mom and didn't want to deal with her anymore. How could they be so heartless? It was Mom's third day in the hospital when our family lawyer paid us a visit. He told Mom that Grandma had left a will, saying that she was giving everything to Mom, including her mansion. I knew it. He was just waiting for your grandma to pass away, Mom said. And it all made sense to me now. Dad wanted all my mom's fortune for himself. Mom fully recovered after the surgery, and we moved into the mansion after a week. She then suggested something unexpected. Why don't you invite Amy and the rest of your friends here tomorrow night? I'm going to throw a huge party. I pinched myself to check if I was dreaming, but Mom giggled and assured me that she was serious. We had some unexpected visitors at the party the next day. I opened the door and was shocked to see Steffi and Seth wearing the special outfits that Mom made. What are you doing here, and why are you wearing those? I thought you said it looked ridiculous, I asked. Where's mom? We miss her, Steffi exclaimed. We just wanted to apologize. We realized that she just wanted to protect us from the virus, Seth explained. I was speechless. Mom heard our voices and immediately came down. My siblings acted like they were so happy to see her again. We've got presents for you, mom. Seth gave her like 10 paper bags filled with alcohol bottles, sanitizers, face masks, gloves, vitamins, and a lot of fruit. Mom didn't say anything. She grabbed the bags and threw them away as if they were the most disgusting thing she had ever touched. I don't need them anymore, right, Sammy? She turned to me and I automatically nodded. Seth and Steffi insisted on coming inside, but Mom shut the door in their faces. Now, let's get back to the party, Mom said, and I just smiled in excitement.